Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Armin Truck Tom, and these last few days we've been perfecting perfecting our Unimog so we can go on a trip with it. Now we did a couple of things that adds a little bit of you know well luxury extra. One of those things is a water tank. We now have a 47 liter uh, water tank. It's not much, but it's something, you know, it'll, it gets us around it. And now we have a little bit of flowing water in our faucet. Uh, the second thing we did was we added a new set of batteries. Lithium iron phosphate we went uh, and got ourselves. And that uh, suits more with our uh, solar panels so that is a big improvement I think and well I couldn't exactly film the install because I needed both of my hands and well we'll just show you the end result and we'll just hope that everything will work on our big trip because we do everything to get this old girl in Iceland. So, uh, when we were driving in the hillsides uh, I heard a strange noise coming from my right front tire uh, when I had a very sharp turn. So I was very very scared that I may have had a bad bearing or uh, a wheel bearing on on the new axle. But then I noticed I have some scratches on the inside of the rims here. So I guess that um, the steering goes too far to one side and as you can see the leads on there are damaged as well so I'll just check it out by the way this is a very handy uh, the jack here for uh, for this thing. Let's see. No, the bearings don't make any sound, so that's that's good. But when you turn it all the way around, you can. I think you can actually see the steering arm shoving the lead back and forth so that's not okay so when I checked the other uh, the other Unimog, Odin's Unimog I've noticed two things one that Unimog does not have any lead on the inside of its front tire so that is pros probably one thing that is supposed to be there second, uh, this Unimog for some reason the wheels go about 5 cm further to the left alright, so I'm still trying to figure out why that is I mean it has these uh, uh, stop blocks here that are not adjustable, so I cannot do anything about that um, But I think it's because of the steering shock absorber that is here from the rear of the axle I think that with the other Unimog The steering has uh, is been limited by the steering uh, shock absorber But well, that is the noise that I'm hearing, so I am I'm actually relieved that it's only just a little bit of rubbing. I'm going to remove the lead on the inside. They're very loose, so 
they are probably not on the right spot anyway anymore so I think you can just like yeah see you can actually see all the yeah that's you can see all the pitting here in the in the rims see how much damage it's been done to this yeah that's not supposed to be like that also here we have on the steering arm itself a little bit of a little bit of rubbing damage but let's see what it does now Okay, this is as far out as it could possibly go. It's still rubbing a little bit, but it's not catching on. So, if I give it just a millimeter back, then it's okay. There we go, you can see it's from this stop here to this stop here. See that? There's a lot of room in between here. And when we go to Odin's Unimog, the Funkoffer, it should be exactly the same, it's way less. You can see that the stick isn't e is just barely at the edge of uh, the fender here. And with and with this, you can see I can oh I can kind of put my pinky in between here. So I think with this anymore with the Funkoffer, the steering is limited by this shock absorber that's it's the only explanation i can give because all the other parts are exactly the same also on this side you can see there you go there's space in between here now that's strange right uh. So yeah, same car, different things. Always a surprise. With the steering sorted, it was now time to install the new lithium iron phosphate batteries. It'll improve our camber quite a bit, I think. We have 8 cells in a row to create 24 volts. And we got ourselves the Victron charger with a Dali BMS to ensure that everything is well balanced out correctly and stuff to run the batteries for a long time hopefully so for our battery management system the BMS we have this app here this monitors my state of charge we're now at 91% uh, capacity 26.6 volts uh, minus 3.2 amps It's charging 3.2 amps I can scroll down a bit and here we have the individual cells With all the voltages of the cells. I have eight cells and I can see that the maximum voltage of a cell is 3.335 volts and 3. Point, and the minimum voltage is 3.328 of a volt so the difference is 0 0.007 volts right now. So that's that's not a lot. That's okay. 
it is being balanced as you can see I'm charging 3 amps we have some parameters here we can uh, fiddle with the state of charge is 91.4 percent so it is charging this is nice and we can set all the parameters for our lithium phosphate batteries so like the 120 amp hours the cell reference voltage etc so that is that setup I also have a Victron app for the solar panels you have my MPT 7515 there we go it is now connecting it is connecting again sometimes it takes a while to connect uh, to this app and as you can see we are now uh, getting 84 watts out of our solar panels and it's currently charging 3.1 amps of course you can set these uh, if you have the LiPo, LiPo 4 batteries you need to set the correct uh, act, uh, battery type so I have here 24 volts maximum current 15 amps oh, and I almost dropped my phone and we can see here that I've put in the lithium iron phosphate battery type which give me the correct voltage amounts and all that stuff so that's pretty cool and I can watch what the Sun is doing if it's very sunny out it, I can get uh, about a hundred and twenty amps out of uh, my solar panels which is nice it's, it's it's enough for my small little setup that's that should be more than enough today it's a bit cloudy so we only get the 80 watts and if you can go into history you can see I've put the panels out today during not during the week because well we had to work and I'm not leaving the solar panels out this was last weekend and before that I didn't do anything but I already got two kilowatt hours out of my panels so yeah that's uh, that's fun and we'll see how everything goes when we actually go on camping I'm very curious to see how long uh, we can go with uh, without uh, the grid so without the 220 volts from, uh, from, from from the grid and see how well the uh, the batteries will perform in combination with my solar panels so let's see how that works out shall we And after the batteries are installed, it was time for the next thing, a water tank. Now, we've put this uh, little tank of 47 liters uh, in the back. Got ourselves a few pumps and fittings and pipes and whatnot. And threw it in there. And look at how beautiful it fits between the chassis. Now, from the rear, it's virtually uh, undetectable or, well, it's tucked away a little bit. So you, it isn't uh, as noticeable. As I'd thought so now we have our installed water tank and it's perfect because we can carry a lot of water with us on our trips it's easy fillable this time we am using a well fire hose because that's the thing we have in our garage <laughs> And of 
course during these times washing your hands is quite important so we now have running water it's a big improvement and also quite handy so now that we've got our water fixed uh, I figured out what that funny noise came from and we have some very good hopefully batteries we can start packing and prepare so please like and subscribe because next adventure will be hopefully taking us to Iceland and that's uh, that's a big trip so Thank you for watching, I will see you next time.